So welcome back. In this part here, we're going to talk about an example of the Gram-Schmidt process. So here is the Gram-Schmidt process. And over here, I have the example that I want to kind of spend a little bit of time on. So here, we want to find an orthogonal basis for the space spanned by W1, W2, W3, where W1, W2, W3 are given by these vectors here. And in fact, they're given. this is a basis. So they're, they are linearly independent as well. So we're going to use the Gram-Schmidt process. Okay, and I thought I'm going to actually work out all the details, all the gory details, so you can see what's happening. Because uh, it's good to know this process uh, well. So the first vector in your orthogonal basis is just takes the first vector in, in your basis of your set. So that, that's pretty easy. So we got one of my three vectors already. One can't write very neatly today. Let's try that again. 1, negative 1, 1. And that's my first vector of my orthogonal basis. So it looks like I'm a third done already. OK, let's move to v2. So v2 is my second vector in my basis. And what I need to do is I need to do w2 dotted with my first vector in my current orthogonal basis, take v1 and dot it with itself, multiply that vector by v1, and then I'm subtracting it from w2. OK, so you can just go slowly and write in all the pieces. OK, so w2 is this vector up here. So that's the vector 2, 1, 0, 2. Now I want to take w2 and dot it with that vector. So let's do that. Maybe I'll just write those vectors here, and then we'll come back to the computation. 2, 2 1, 0, 1, dotted with 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And now I have to take the first vector and dot it with itself. So we'll put that down here. 1, negative 1, negative 1, dotted with itself. 1, negative 1, negative 1. Right? So just pay attention, right? The, the numerator and the denominator are going to be integers, and but then we're going to scale the vector v1 by whatever this number is. Okay, So we're just kind of putting out all the pieces of the formula. And now let's actually compute some of these things. So I have my vector 2, 1, 0, 2. Now I'm going to do the dot product. So the numerator is uh, 2 plus negative 1 plus 0 plus 1. So it gives me a 2 upstairs. And then downstairs, I get 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times negative 1 plus negative 1 times negative 1 plus 1 times 1, which gives me a 4. And then I subtract from 1, negative 1, 1. So I'm taking this vector minus a half of the second vector. And when I do crank out all the details, I get 3 half, 3 half, 1 half, and 1 half. So according to the Gram-Schmidt process, this vector should be the next vector in my orthogonal basis. And you, should, you can pause here for a minute and just take a second and say, OK, v1 and v2 should be orthogonal to each other. Are these two vectors orthogonal to each other? So quickly do a dot product in your head. So here we have 1 times 3 half plus minus 3 half minus 1 half plus 1 half. If you add all of that up in your head, you're going to get 0. Okay. So we have two vectors that are orthogonal. So we're off to a good start. And we checked it. Now you may think, oh, this is too bad because I have a lot of fractions here. And just let me introduce a computational trick when you're doing this. And I'll explain why you can do this. So computational trick. You can rescale so no fractions. Right? And why can you rescale so that without destroying the orthogonality property. Well, you're not changing the direction of the vector if you rescale, right? So you're preserving the orthogonality, but you're just stretching the vector, OK? So I am going to now take as my v2. I don't like all those two, so I'll just scale it by 2. So I'll say that v2 is equal to the vector 3, 3, 1, 1. And if you want, take a second and just convince yourself that the v1 that you started with and the new v2 are orthogonal. 
Okay, so we'll have to move on to another page. That's the one downside of the Graham Schmidt processes. It takes up a lot of space to do your computations, but let's figure it out. So V3 is equal to the third vector minus W3 dotted with V1, uh, with V1 dotted with V1 downstairs, uh, multiplied by the vector V1, and then minus W3 dotted with V2 over V2 dotted with V2 times the vector V2. Right, so these are my coefficients. Sorry, that was, there we go, there are my coefficients and I'm doing my scaling. And let's crank all of this information out. So my W3 is two, two, one, two. Oh, you can actually see it still on the left-hand side. Um, I'll do the calculations and you can double check later. Uh, this number right here is one fourth. So you get one, negative one, negative one, one. And in an interest of time, I also computed the next coefficient. So negative 15, 20. And this one we're multiplying by the vector three, three, one, one. And when you expand everything out and collect all the terms and collapse everything, you get minus one half, zero, one half, and one, okay? And if you prefer, you can rescale. You can rescale. So V3 looks like the vector, uh, looks like the vector negative one, zero, one, and two. So putting all the pieces together, we have the following. So the following three vectors, one minus one minus one, one, comma, three, three, one, one, comma, and negative one, zero, one, two, it's an orthogonal basis. of w okay so you can check that each of these any two pairs they're orthogonal to each other it's clearly not an orthonormal basis because some of these vectors have length bigger than one but of course you can just rescale them by normalizing and then you could also get an orthonormal basis for w so i hope this example illustrates the procedure and in the next part in, uh, we'll look at why this works